Welcome to the Cheating Secrets channel. Tom saw John entering the bar and smiled upon seeing his friend. Tom had hoped that John would come by, despite the early evening and the bar being quite empty. It had been several weeks since they last gathered together. John had been busy with something happening in his life and had become unreachable. Tom tried calling and emailing but couldn't get through to his friend, and he was really worried. He even tried stopping by John's home and office, but John never seemed to be there. Tom really hoped that John's problems were resolved, but the angry expression on John's face told him that was far from the case. Tom stood up to shake hands, but suddenly he was knocked to the ground by a vicious right cross from John to his jaw. Tom's head bounced off a neighboring table as he fell to the floor. What the hell? muttered a stunned Tom, spitting out a tooth. John stood over him, ready to hit him again. You damn bastard, you knew. You and your wife were laughing at me all this time because you, freak, knew. Damn couple. You both got immense pleasure from how much of a fool I was. The quick swelling of his jaw and the numbness from what was likely a concussion made it hard for Tom to focus. He couldn't make any sense of what his friend was saying because it all made no sense to him. The only word that escaped Tom's lips was, What? A flurry of blows followed, and John shouted, I'm sure it was damn funny that you hung out with me just so she could have sex. Hey, buddy, let's go to my father-in-law's cabin for the weekend. Hey, buddy, Emily bought us tickets to the concert you wanted to see, which is only three hours away, so we need to stay the night. Any lousy excuse to get me out of the house and out of the area so she could sleep with that scumbag. I should have seen it coming, but I never thought you'd do this to me. I have no idea what I did to make you hate me so much that you would help her cheat on me. You're not only a lousy person, but also a lousy friend. By this time, several bar patrons had grabbed John and started pulling him back. Tom stared at his friend, stunned by the blows and puzzled by his friend's actions and words, barely understanding what had happened. The bartender had called the police as soon as the first blow was struck, and fortunately, a patrol car was nearby. The ambulance took much longer to arrive, so while John was being detained and put into the patrol car, Tom struggled to get to his feet with the help of some strangers. The paramedics quickly examined Tom and placed him on a stretcher, securely strapping him down for transport to the emergency room. Tom lost consciousness before the ambulance even left the parking lot with its siren wailing. To Tom, it all felt like a short, bad dream. When he slowly opened his eyes and woke up, he quickly realized he was in a hospital. He saw the machines and a typical hospital room with medical equipment and a 20-year-old TV. This wasn't a nightmare. It was real. As he started to regain consciousness, Tom's wife, Emily, entered with tears on her face. I'm so sorry, baby. I wanted to be here when you woke up, but I stepped out to call your parents and tell them you were okay. How do you feel? Tom raised himself slightly on the bed and tried to gather his thoughts about what had happened. Emily sat next to him and took his hand. Sleep and medication had reduced the swelling a bit, so at least his words were understandable. I don't know what happened. I've never seen him like that before. He said something about Amanda cheating on him and that we were helping her, that we were the reason for it. His words made no sense. Emily's tears continued to fall as Tom went on. Maybe I misheard, but he seemed to think we took those trips just so Amanda could cheat on him. It's crazy. Why would he think something so insane? When Tom paused for a moment, he looked at Emily. Lowering her head, she whispered that she was very sorry. I don't know why you're apologizing. He's the one who hit me, and he had this crazy idea that we were helping her cheat. It sounds so stupid. Why would he think we would help her do something so harmful? What kind of awful people would do that to someone they care about? Tom looked at Emily as she raised her head. Something was off in the way she was acting. Maybe he was out of it, but her behavior was really suspicious. She usually had a lot to say, especially about relationships with close friends. She could be in shock from the situation, as this was not something one could easily imagine. Just as he was about to ask her what was going on, the doctor came in and said that Tom's jaw was neither broken nor dislocated, just bruised. If Tom didn't have a headache, he would be allowed to go home tonight with Emily. Tom's head did hurt, but something was clearly wrong with Emily, so he obediently lied to the doctor, saying he felt great so he could leave. 
time passed as the nurses diligently worked on the paperwork, leaving Tom with no opportunity to question Emily about what was happening. He hoped she would explain everything once they got home. They were both silent on the way home while Emily drove. They didn't even turn on the music, they just stayed silent the entire way. Tom needed answers, but by the time he got home, he was exhausted and just wanted to sleep. After a quick change of clothes, Tom was worn out and fell asleep. Emily curled up next to him, hugging him tightly with all her might. After a shower, Tom went downstairs and joined Emily in the kitchen. He was still in pain, but at least his head was clearer. Emily was already sitting at the table, drinking her coffee, but when Tom joined her, he saw that she was deep in thought. Emily finally realized Tom was in the room. She asked, How are you feeling now? Okay, but my head still hurts a bit, and everything aches. A day of rest, and I'll be fine. I still can't understand what made John go so crazy. Taking a sip, Tom continued, Did Amanda say anything to you? Have you talked to her since yesterday to figure out what happened with him? I did talk to her a bit yesterday. She was just as shocked as I was that he could do something like that to you. Tom watched his wife as she spoke. It seemed like a measured and careful response, but there was something more. She seemed sad, which was unusual because it was the complete opposite of her typically vibrant personality. She was reserved. He thought that maybe she was just shaken by the attack and that it affected her more than he initially thought. Reaching out, he took her hands in his. It's okay, darling. I'm okay. I'm recovering. His shirt soon became wet from the stream of her tears. They hugged, exchanging the words, I love you, while holding each other tightly. They both called in sick to work and spent the entire day at home. Tom didn't know exactly what it was, but something beyond the physical pain was troubling him. Nothing in all of this seemed to make any sense. John's sudden attack with the accusation that he and Emily had helped Amanda cheat. Emily had suddenly become timid and reserved. Her carefully worded answers to basic questions. He wanted to press her again about her phone conversation with Amanda, but Emily was on the verge of tears, and he thought it wasn't the right time for an interrogation. Despite both staying home, they seemed to be keeping their distance from each other. Tom sat in the backyard, watching the wind sway the trees and grass, and pondered. He needed to understand why John had attacked him. They had been friends for a long time, and Tom had never seen John lose his temper without good reason. Tom thought about his wife's words and couldn't recall her ever saying that John's wife hadn't cheated on him, only that they regretted the attack on Tom. It was necessary to understand John's perspective on this story, and the best way to learn it was from John himself. Although there was a risk that John might attack him again, it seemed the most direct way to establish a basic understanding of what had happened. Then Tom would sit down with Emily to discuss their role in the incident and what made John think that Emily and Tom had betrayed him. Emily told Tom that she would briefly go to work to pick up her laptop, as she would be home for the rest of the week and didn't want to fall too far behind on her schedule. After she left, Tom decided to take a risk and visit John. On the way to John's house, Tom tried unsuccessfully to call him. Tom hoped that John was already out of jail, so he took a taxi to John's house. If Tom was lucky, John would be there so they could figure out what had caused this mess and get back to normal life. When Tom arrived at John's house, his stomach sank as he saw Emily's car in the driveway. Instead of ringing the front doorbell, Tom went to the back of the house until he was near an open window by the kitchen. He stopped when he heard Emily talking to Amanda. Emily was no longer silent. She was clearly furious. John overheard me talking about setting up a date and that you would cover for me. He heard a conversation that was obviously not meant for him. So how does that explain why he attacked Tom? John heard me say that you would cover for me and that Tom and John would be occupied so I could have some fun without John getting suspicious. He must have taken it to mean that Tom knew what was going on. I would have warned you if I had known, but it was only after the attack on Tom that I realized John knew. John is furious. He even used his phone call from jail to tell me how much he hates me and that he'd rather rot in jail than live with me, along with all the other hurtful things he could think of. Emily wanted to sympathize with her friend, but it was Amanda who had left John. Emily's foolishness in helping Amanda had already caused serious problems in her own marriage, and things could get worse once Tom found out. She knew that helping a cheater was wrong, 
But she and Amanda were close friends, and she hoped Amanda would be satisfied with a brief fling or two and then become a good wife to John again. Instead, Emily's support had led to the worst outcome, and now she had to deal with the consequences for her own marriage because Amanda couldn't keep her legs together. I know you have your problems, but so do I. Once Tom finds out what happened, my marriage will be in serious trouble. Why would your marriage be in trouble? You didn't cheat, and Tom and John had the chance to have some fun. Tom knows you never cheated on him. If necessary, I'll tell him you never did. Of course, Tom couldn't see it, but from Emily's tone, he understood that she had closed her eyes and rubbed her forehead as she spoke. You really don't understand. I lied to him. I helped you deceive his best friend. Because of me, his best friend attacked him. Do you really think he will believe a single word I say? And as for your help, you're the one person he'll hate even more than me in this situation. Do you think he'll listen to anything you say and believe such a liar? But you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't cheat. He should know that. It doesn't matter. I have no idea how to fix this. And if I don't have a solution by the time Tom finds out, my marriage will likely end just like yours. I can't believe what a fool I was to help you. If I lose him, I will never speak to you again. But you have always been a loving wife. He knows how much you love him. Yes, of course. I'm such a loving wife that my support of my promiscuous friend led to my husband getting his ass kicked by his best friend. You really don't get it, do you? How foolish you are. Do you think he'll trust me now? At best, it will take years for him to trust me again. Tom had heard enough and quietly walked back outside. His steadfast character allowed him to stay calm and focused on the task at hand. While waiting for a taxi, he realized he needed to start fixing things. But first, he had to make sure he had all the facts. It was time to visit a friend. To say the duty sergeant and detectives were puzzled would be an understatement. But after many years of dealing with strange incidents in police work, they simply shrugged when Tom said he wanted to post bail. They smirked at John's expression when he saw that Tom had bailed him out, and they openly laughed when Tom told John to just shut up until he was told to speak. A bewildered John followed Tom and silently got into the car. After Tom gave the driver the address, they sat in silence until they arrived at the scene of the crime. The same bartender was on duty, looking nervous and clearly apprehensive about any trouble, but Tom quickly reassured him by asking for a bottle of Glimmerangy Signet, two glasses, and privacy as they moved to a corner booth. Tom poured a generous amount into both glasses and slid one to John. They both drank and exchanged, screw you, as a toast to the first sip. Tom looked at his friend. I didn't know about this setup. I just wanted to hang out and have a good time with you. But they used our friendship against you. They knew I would never agree to this. So they launched their crappy scheme without me. John looked intently at his friend. They had known each other for so long that he could always tell when Tom was talking nonsense. From the expression on Tom's face, it was clear he was being honest. When the initial anger subsided and he had cooled off in jail, John was able to think rationally. Or at least rationally about what Tom had told him. She ripped my heart out and your lying wife helped her. I gave everything I had to our marriage and it was a waste of time because she chose to go after some other guy. Tom refilled their drinks and just listened to his friend as John expressed his frustration and anger about his marriage. When the whiskey and talking eventually calmed John down, he was able to apologize for the attack. I probably should have talked to you first, but I couldn't help myself. The news that my marriage and our friendship were over made me lose control. As much as it killed me that she was a cheat, the thought that you had stabbed me in the back was even worse. Cheating is bad enough. But the idea that you were laughing at me hurt even more. I'm really sorry. Tom smirked, sipping his whiskey. It's okay. I probably deserved it for sleeping with your sister during Christmas break that one time. How did you find out she was cheating? John shook his head. It's really stupid. A few weeks ago, I thought something was off in my marriage, so I started distancing myself. Eventually, I concluded she must be cheating and was preparing to hire a private detective. But while I was at work, my phone started showing video and audio from the ring camera on the front porch. The motion detector was triggered when Amanda picked up an Amazon package, and she was talking on the phone arranging a meetup to sleep with some guy. She said that you and Emily would be able to help her, like before. 
It didn't seem like you were unaware. It sounded like you were actively involved in the deception. Tom stared at him, not believing what he was hearing. Two marriages destroyed because one woman couldn't keep her legs closed and forgot about the camera. So, does that mean Emily was cheating too? I hadn't thought about it, but it makes sense she might do the same thing she was covering up for my wife. Actually, I'm almost convinced that Emily wasn't cheating. I overheard them talking before I picked you up, and it convinced me that she wasn't fooling around. Then if she wasn't cheating, why do you want to divorce her? It might be easier to forgive her if she had slept with someone else. What happened is even worse for me. The problem isn't the cheating. It's the trust. She not only lied to me repeatedly about her actions and your wife, but she also used our friendship to cover it up in the most malicious way, making me an active participant in the deception. How can I stay in a marriage with her if I can't trust her anymore, and my best friend hates her? Trust can be rebuilt. I don't trust my wife at all, but Emily loves you. Are you sure this is the end? I think so. Trust that's patched up over time isn't stronger. It's weaker. People can forgive, but they never forget. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life hoping that years from now, it will just be a faded memory. She knew what she was doing, and there's nothing she can say to fix this. It's time for me to leave and start fresh. John envied his friend. Despite all this, you'll have a peaceful divorce, and you both will remain on good terms. Meanwhile, I'll be trying to figure out which Mexican brothel rents out mistresses so I can find Amanda a suitable job for her skill set and pay less alimony. I admire your ability to see life as it is. You define your path and just live your life. Tom laughed. It seemed like his world was ending, but he knew that in the long run, he would be okay. He went home and talked with Emily. Since she already knew what was going to happen, it would likely be relatively conflict-free. She cried and begged for counseling, but understood that he couldn't come to terms with her behavior. It wasn't in his nature, and she knew that. It was time for him to choose a new direction and look at his life with fresh eyes because the chapter of his marriage with Emily had ended. Thank you for listening until the end. See you in the next episode of Cheating Secrets. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Goodbye.